I think the, the biggest thing around content in 2024 is going to be, look, people are just going to be more and more controversial. Why should we listen to you? You're getting like 200 views on this YouTube video. One of the biggest problems that these people have is that they make this content and there is nothing on their page that suggests they're a coach. As a guess that those people that content did quite well for are going to continue chasing those numbers and it's just going to decline and decline and decline and decline and decline. What we think is going to be working content-wise in 2024 to get you more clients. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly Biceps and Banter, um, or both. Not formally, just both. Yeah. Um, and we're here to help you with your online fitness I business. I feel like Prince when you say that, you know, like any the artist formerly known as Prince. Where we can, yeah. yeah. I wish I was a Prince. Wouldn't have to do these, would I? Um, anyway, <laughs> no, I love it really. I love you. Don't worry about it. Um, Who loved you, baby? Today, we're going to talk about what's going to work in content in 2024. Our prediction, obviously, because no one knows until, obviously, the year has been and gone. But we're going to make a prediction based on what we've seen towards the back end of 2023. Again, working with well over 150 coaches, helping them with their content on a daily basis. Trends we've seen, things we've seen working, things that we were right about last year. So we're pretty sure that we're going to be right about this year. Other things that maybe we've seen crop up in 2023 that we need to make sure happen in 2024 with content. Um, yeah. Be controversial, isn't it? No. So basically what, um, I think the, the biggest thing around content in 2024 is going to be, look, people are just going to be more and more controversial and- Weigh five pounds of fat. Yeah, they weigh five pounds of fat around. Um, I think that the whole element of controversy is kind of like a big problem on social media is that obviously you have to grab attention and people have to kind of be a little bit more that way inclined. And I think some of the ways people are going about it is just completely, you know, stupid and wrong. Um, but it's the way the world is and it's the way social media works, um, unfortunately. Um, we're all we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of clicking on stuff that's controversial and seeing it, want to see what someone said or all this sort of thing. So that's only going to continue, right? Let's, let's just get that out there. Bland, boring content with zero opinion in it is just not going to get you anywhere whatsoever. Anywhere whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, um, so the first thing that I'd probably like to say um, is why should we listen to you? You're getting like 200 views on this, um, on this YouTube video. Um, Good point. Yeah. Um, good point. Don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Why are they listening to us? <laughs> oh, go on. Um, yeah. No. The reason why is because um, what what we are. I don't know whether you, you, you can use the word very good at, but what we are pretty good at. Let's just say you can't be very attractive. You can't. <laughs> <she'll see>. um, <laughs> um, is monetizing the audience. Like, yeah, we might not have got the most views. Yeah, we might not have got the most followers, and that that's fine because we've probably got was you know better business like let's be honest let's just let's just say how it is revenue per follower i reckon we probably right but... revenue per follower yeah whatever um yeah. we're able to monetize the, the the audience that we have because we're good at our job because we get good results because we're approachable likable we do things ethically we do things in the right manner so when we're talking and giving content advice it's predicated on the fact that you want to build a business that's like ours that isn't necessarily wanting to grow to 100 200 500,000 followers unnecessarily by jumping on trends our way of thinking is it if you nail down the content that is congruent to you, your message in the audience that you want to reach and you do it very, very well, you won't need to have 100, 200, 500,000 followers and be, um, and be at liberty of um, the algorithm changing every, every second week. That's also as well based on the assumption that people with those amounts of followers are getting loads more money. Which is not Which always the case. Not, yeah. Because we, again, we work with coaches that have that level of following who aren't monetizing it as well as they could be um, because they got viral from waving around five pounds of fat on an Instagram video, right? So I, I believe in 2024, we talked about this around like, you know, the, the content and stuff is like, look, the shock factor or the hook factor of like being controversial in that first line and waving around a prop it's not getting the engagement it used to. People are wise up to it. They realize what people are trying to do. And and it, when when they first did it, it was unique and different. Yeah. And now it's not unique and different. Now everyone's doing it. So, so the unique and different thing is actually not using one. So the principle of why they use it in the fir first place is because it stopped you from scrolling. Is because it yeah. grabbed attention. That's the principle. It's not because it's five pounds of fat. It's not because it's a microphone on the end of a spoon. It's not because of the specific prop that they're using. It's because it stopped the scroll and it was hooky and engaging and different. That's why it worked. Now everybody's doing it. So that has been removed. The, you need to think about the principle, not the actual specific of it. It's not that it's five pounds of fat. It's that somebody's waving something in your face and it's quite sharp cuts. That's been removed. Um, so you need to you need to think about that when making your own content um, this year because 
I think as a as a guess that those people that that content did quite well for are going to continue chasing those numbers and it's just going to decline and decline and decline and decline and decline. And look, let's be honest, once you've seen that video once, you've seen it a thousand times, it's the same stuff, it's the same crude analogies, it's the same repetitive um, points all the time with no real clear backup of why somebody should work with them as a coach. Instead, every CTA is, why you should drop me a follow um, if your parents didn't love you? Like, okay, great, wicked, cool. Um, and that's all it is for more tips like this and to stop being a fat cunt, um, drop me a follow. It's not it's not really that clever, is it? Like, it's not really that cool. We said cunt. Oh, well done. We can all say that. Cunt, cunt, cunt. Like, um, so when you're creating your content, is your content going to encourage somebody to pay you some cash at the end of it? Because that's ultimately what you want some clients. Or is it just you trying to play the game and trying to get more numbers on a on a, on a video? Like, think about what you're actually doing it for. Um, because these people, I just feel like their accounts are just going to die. Like, if they're, if they're not already, by the way, because we've, we've heard some things that it's maybe not going in the right direction for a lot of people. Think about it common sense-wise. You... You grow, a th let's just say you grow 100,000 followers in one month that have all come in because of this new style of content where you're waving five pounds of fat round, whatever, right? And then in six months' time, you're still waving that same five pounds of fat round, doing the same style of content, right? Do you think that those followers, when they came in that big influx, are probably bored by of that by now? Yeah, probably, I would say. Because we all know that when we watch content, right, um, you you like the guy in the, in the glasses that hits footballs, right? At some point, if you haven't already, you probably stop start watching less yep. of them. Yep. Right. Yep. People will start watching less. Have you unfollowed him? Not yet, but I don't see as much. I don't because I don't like as much of his stuff. I don't see as much of it. So that's the point. Yep. He hasn't unfollowed him yet. He doesn't. Or yet, yeah. He doesn't see as much content because he's not engaged with it. So think about if you've got five hundred thousand followers that are in the same boat as Dan is with this this account that we've just spoke about. They've maybe not have unfollowed you yet. They're not seeing your videos because they're not engaged with it because it's the same video again. Instagram will recognize that your engagement is going down because it's not going to be seen as valuable content. Because if you're getting 500,000, if you've got 500,000 followers and you're getting um, 10,000 views on a, on a reel now, that's not a good percentage anymore. Like you might go, oh, 10,000 is quite a lot. Well, as a percentage of followers, it's, it, it's not. So I've just got a feeling that accounts will die and die and die. And then imagine trying to find clients out of 500,000 followers. Imagine trying to find that. Imagine trying to monetize that. Yeah. It's going to be very tough. So the thing with that example there that Mike's talking about, um, for example, like I watched this guy's video and I found one of his skits really funny that he did. And I like his other style skits that he does. But then to be fair to him, the reason I don't think he's grown as big as he could do is that he does try and push his audience to, for example, his YouTube channel to other content. Now his other content on his YouTube channel is like him playing Fortnite. I'm not gonna watch that. I'm not gonna subscribe to it. So like I then realized, right, I only like this guy's little sketches, right? That's all I kind of like. So I was like, okay, I like Mike, so I probably would unfollow him next time I pop his stuff pops up. Um, but the problem that online coaches have is they, they do the equivalent of just making that sketch over and over again. So what they do is they make that sketch and they get addicted to that to that feeling of like, okay, I made this one sketch people found funny. If that guy just posted those sketches and he posted a hundred of them, yeah, I'd like a few of them and I get to that point. If he then completely switched those sketches around, it was like all about YouTube, all about channel email, I wouldn't join his email list. I wouldn't do anything like that. And let's say his followers grew to 500,000. That's a lot of people that are going to assume be really disengaged, really uninterested. Whereas actually the way he's done it with say 30,000 followers is he's probably trying to build in I need to get them from Instagram onto another thing. So he's actually done it the right way in that sense that he's not tried to go fucking crazy. Whereas what coaches do, they get addicted to that feeling of followers coming in, the sketchy based content. And then when they try and sell something, the audience are not interested. They're only there for that sketch, that one type of video. They get bored very, very quickly, bored very easily. They don't want the next thing you're offering. One of the biggest problems that these people have is that they make this content then there is nothing on their page that suggests they're a coach, that suggests they're good at their job, that they've got any sorts of results. And I think if they did that alongside it and they're alongside trying to grow, they A, wouldn't have grown as much, which is, again, is absolutely fine because people would have quickly realized, oh, they're not just posting these videos. They actually are a coach. They are actually helping people. They are going to try and sell me something at some point. They're just too addicted to that feeling of trying to gain followers versus the feeling of being addicted to getting people reach out to them and want to start coaching, which is what you should be doing. So one of the things that's going to work with content in 2024 for very good coaches, and again, this, you could change the year for any year. It's going to be results. If you're posting content in the hope of going viral or gaining more followers, you better make sure that when people come to your page, that there are results there. And it's very, very clear that you're a coach who has a service to sell. I cannot, cannot express that enough. Like 
so many people's accounts are set up and I'm like, I wouldn't know how to start working with you. I just wouldn't know how to even reach out and start that conversation because it looks to me like you're just trying to be a really bad comedian <laughs> with, with your content, right? Guilty. And we and look, we love it as much as anyone, but you'll notice with our stuff, like we did the other day, we did our bloopers reel for one of our videos and we did a reel that we thought was really, really funny. We both then followed up the next day with a bit of social proof of clients that have gone from this to this. Some of our better social proof. There's a reason we did that. It's not just, uh, yeah, today I'll post that. It was... I did it anyway. I'm sure you did the same thing. Is like, I was like, okay, cool. We've just done this really well. Loads of comments, loads of engagement. Cool, nice. Next post, we're fucking good at our jobs. We're, we're clowns, right? We are clowns, right? We like having fun as much as anyone. Um, but then we're also really good at our jobs. That's the bit a lot of coaches are missing out on. They, they can't wait to grow their followers. Not as interested about, about um, growing their client numbers. That is, again, the long and short of it with content. That's it. Um, again, it's all well and good having somebody enjoy um, a video because you're swearing in it or do, doing a prop, but making them pay for you um, for your coaching advice is completely different. They've got to be trusting that you're going to get them the best result. And what demonstrates that better than, than social proof? So again, like Dan said, like my thought process the other day, and we didn't even speak about it. It was it's literally just come up now was I've been a bit of a clown one day. Now I'm just going to show people that I know my shit, know my shit the next day. Done. And, and that's how you get that personality within your content. And then in some of the social proof, you can add even more personality into the copy. So the, the, the social proof that I might put up might have a little dig or a little uh, attack or a little tongue-in-cheek thing and, again, get the vibe across in the copy because it's still congruent to me, but I'm just demonstrating that I can back things up. So the next thing that I think will, will help content in any year is being on some kind of personal journey yourself. Engagement will increase. Um, you'll be leading from the front, walking the walk, all that authority shit. Figure, yeah. Authority figure, being doing a, a shoe, a show, a, a marathon, a high rocks, a, a CrossFit games, anything, anything that you want to do, any kind of road to 200, 300 kilo deadlift, whatever it is, right? Be on a, a, a journey yourself. Be maybe being coached potentially, um, or if not, have clear structure, strategy, um, give updates on it, um, show progress, get people involved within it, create content about it, speak to people about it. Doing something like that is, as weird as it sounds, inspirational to, yep. to your clients. It's inspirational to see that you're doing the things that they want to do, rather than you just on a beach in Dubai going... Um, yeah, look how easy this is. Um, you know, get in shape. Here's why you need to stop being fat. Um, okay, easy for you to say, but you're not actually doing any of it. Yeah, and, and using that example there, like that's if I was still if I was still doing online coaching now, and again, assuming I wasn't in Dubai, for example, I I would be using that and I'd be attacking that whole message. Like oh, it's easy for the Instagram models to sit there on their beach in Dubai in the middle of winter, sipping on cocktails, telling you to train harder and all this sort of stuff when they're probably on a cocktail of drugs and all this sort of shit, right? Again, they may or may not be. It's libelous, isn't it? Is that libelous? Yeah. Can't yeah. libel the dead. So no cool. name. So. Um, you know, so like, and I would say, well, I'm here at, you know, 6 a.m. in the morning getting up, um, walking the dogs, um, knowing I've got to train first thing. It's freezing cold. We've got to put these layers on. Whether you think it or not, it's probably to, to, to your type of niche and your type of person, again, if you do it correctly, it's more inspiring for them to see you doing that and see you go through that journey than it is what, watching that fitness model who's, again, out of reach almost like, you know, maybe to some degree they follow them just to get an insight into what their life is like, but actually they're a bit like, oh, fuckers, like, I wish I was like that. Whereas you're actually doing the thing that you're asking other people to do. And I think that it's massively underplayed by coaches. They don't understand that they have so much content on a daily basis to share, but they just don't share it because they think it's boring. They don't think it's useful. They don't think it's relevant. And, and it's more relevant than they know. Um, and it's stuff that we should be better at and we need to be better at because that, that's that's a huge part of attracting people to your business. But I think we'd still do it quite well anyway, even though we're busy and, and could be better at it. I think that's a, a it's an online coach's secret weapon is to like, you should be doing photo shoots if you're getting people in photo shoot shape. You should be doing high rocks if you're helping people get in high rock shape. You should be running marathons if you're helping people run marathons. You should be a powerlift, powerlift competitions if you're helping people get stronger. You should be doing those things. Like it's it's like it's like we talk about all the time. It's like other jobs. It's like going to see a you know if you were going to see a um, well, obviously the, an accountant who's broke. It's like, oh, I wouldn't work with it. It wouldn't wouldn't be congruent. It just doesn't make any sense. It's the same thing. It's that whole concept of leading from the front and being that authority figure. You don't have to like put it everywhere. You don't have to like say I'm the world's best marathon runner. Obviously you're not. 
it's not about that. It's about showing people that you understand their problems, their pain points. And that's where people aren't using their Instagram stories enough. People think, that, oh, how am I going to make a post about that? Well, you, well, A, you can make a post, do a day in the life, show a little like fun day in life, which might seem an example of in a second of how to do that. I know he is. Um, and that's how I would do it, very similar way as well. But I would do the same day in the life, but I would do slightly different tweaks to it is that you can do that in your Instagram stories every single day. Oh, it's the same. It's boring posting the same thing every day. No, it's not. Because that's life. But people do that every single day. They want to see you doing it every day so that they can see the result of you doing that every day. Oh yeah, look, he did the high rocks. He did a really good time. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should get his help next time I want a high rocks. Not going from zero to, I'm going to do a high rocks. Never hear from you ever again. Oh, I did a high rocks. Has less effect than you showing the whole journey of you getting there. Promise you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I will cover the, 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 the day in the life stuff. Um, in a second. Some of you might go, um, yeah, but I'm not doing anything like that. I don't want to do high rocks. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But you can literally make it to be whatever you want to be. So I was just thinking about a way that you could, just for like the average coach, because, you know, you, you'll you get the argument of you don't need to be in shape to be a good coach and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, technically, yeah. But from a perception point of view. So let's just say you were a really bang average um, looking coach, like, and again, respectfully, you Hello. Could, what, what, what about being the, <laughs> um, the non-genetically gifted natural coach? Like, and you just talked about, I've got shit genes, um, but here's how I'm working around it. Here are the things that I'm doing. You know, I wasn't genetically blessed like a lot of people in my industry, but I know how to get around that. These are the things that I've struggled with all my life because guess what? People will resonate with that because what, what do other people say? I've just got shit genes. I gain weight really quickly. I just can't get my chest to grow. Who are they going to look? To? Who are they going to look to? Somebody who's quite clearly visibly added muscle to their chest that was pretty shit in the beginning and brought it up, and and they're they're, they're on a bench press journey and they're they're trying to hit new numbers. And again, here's how you can do it too. Go with that one, and you can use it in your content. You can say like, I'm not like the other coaches because of X, Y, and Z. That's still a journey. You don't need to be winning shows or winning powerlifting competitions. You don't need to do that. Whatever it is that you're doing, just show that you're doing something. Mm. So on the day in the life thing, right? And a lot of people go, oh, day in the life, oh, I don't do anything. I've, I've actually got that from my clients already. Oh, I don't really do anything. But you don't need to be doing anything. Like, you just need to show the things that you are doing. I'm assuming you're not sat there in a dark room for 24 hours a day. A day in the life is a really, re or you could even do like a weekly highlight. So you'll see a lot of people already do like the weekly debrief shit in, in, in picture format. Why not do it in video format? Because you know it's going to go a little bit further. You're able to get more personality across and you're able to show a little bit more. So as a rough example of how I might do a day in the life, right? And then you can kind of take from that what you will and then maybe use it. Don't copy it. Um going to get copied. Yeah, it's going to get copied. But here's what I would do. I'd go downstairs, first thing, I would click on the kettle and I would uh, make a cup of tea and say, because tea is better than coffee. I'd then come in, I'd put my monitor on, I'd put my shades on to do my check-ins. I'd then show me at my desk with the shot from behind with me, um, with my spreadsheets up and my data tracking and one of the tabs would have Pornhub up. I would then um, have my lunch, drive to the gym, train, come back, have my protein shake, spill it down me, get back to check-ins. I'd have my best social proof on screen at the time that I'm doing check-ins. I'd then go to the range, I'd duff a golf ball. I'd come back, I'd have my dinner, I'd sit down, I'd put power on TV, I'd go to bed. Like 15 seconds, something like that. Clips, 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 right? All the way through. And what have I done there? So I've showed behind the scenes of my coaching, so what it looks like, the data tracking. I've showed some social proof within that because I've had my best social proof on the screen. I've showed... Again, if I was a coach, let's just say what I'm eating, I've showed what I'm doing in, potentially in the gym. It could, you know, could be two reps, one, one rep, two reps, something like that, right? Showed what I'm doing in the gym, showed that I'm leading from the front. I've also showed things that I'm doing outside of fitness in my personal life. I've showed golf and I've showed power and I've given something. I've strategically not put in the good golf shot because I know it'll get some comments. But I've also planted in things along that way that I know that are going to cause a reaction. So somebody might react to tea versus coffee. Somebody might call me a dirty bastard for having Pornhub tab up in the corner that I'd, I'd planted there. Somebody might laugh at me spilling the protein shake. Somebody might say, fucking golf solid, isn't it? I'm trying to, trying to play myself. Somebody might ask me about power and go, oh, I've not seen it. Is it any good? Or I've seen it. It's brilliant. It's showing... And again, I'm not doing anything astronomical there. What I've just described is me sat down doing check-ins, me going to the gym, me eating food and me going to the, the the golf range and watching an evening show. That's that's not me bungee jumping. Like, that's just an average day. So I'm showing it, but I'm thinking about what details I'm planting in there for an effect. Yeah, and people just really don't understand the value in doing that. And and, and what they'll do is they'll do that once, and I know I'm really reacted. 
what were you expecting? Like, yeah, but you have to do it all the time. So if Mike posted him watching Power every day for three weeks, you know, I think someone might go, oh, is it any good then? Well, yeah, obviously I'm watching it three weeks in a row. Obviously it's good. Like my scrambled eggs, I, that didn't become a thing. I posted that for about two, three weeks in a row and then all of a sudden people started commenting, oh, fucking hell, these look pretty good actually, to be fair. How'd you do them? I've had, I've had about five people ask me, what's the secret? What's the recipe? Fucking scrambled eggs, mate. I was just fucking making one of a fucking hob and whisk them. Like, it's nothing genius, but people think that there's something to it because I post it that often. If I had just given up after the first day because no one commented on my eggs, well, I've not made it a thing yet. Again, same with Mike there with like the golf thing. It could just be like, got to the, got to the golf range and it could be that every time he goes to the range, he only, put, only shows the ones of him doing shit shots. I, again, if I all did of some, them. All of them, yeah. <laughs> so if I did something similar, right? I would do it, I, I, so for example, for me, I would do, again, same thing. I come down first thing in the morning, I have a coffee and I, similar to like uh, Steve does very well, obviously, you know, milky coffee, black coffee, whatever. I would say some long lines of like, depends what mood I'm in. Uh, how early I had to get up, whatever. I'd show them me getting the dogs out of their cages, giving them a treat or something like that. And again, I'd have a bit of fun with that and I'd make them one of them do a trick, I don't know, something stupid, right? Same thing with Maggie. Then go, daughter comes down, she's a bit moody or whatever, that kind of thing. Then the same thing with the training. I'd show me not training very hard. I'd show me dicking around at training. I'd show me on my phone. Do you know what I mean? I'd do like, oh yeah, I'm just training really hard. And like be sat there doing, I'd post a video of me on my phone in between sets, right? That's the bit I'd post rather than me training hard because it's more of a joke because then Mike would chime in and be like, oh, that's, that's about as much as you do in the gym, right? Again, go home, have lunch. I wouldn't eat very much because I'd be like, I, I don't have a big appetite and no wonder I can't get big. Little things like that, that are the, it's the same day in the life effectively. And again, at the golf range, I would show me doing one good shot and then I'd show me effing and blinding and getting pissed off because one went off to the right because that's the way I am. I would show these things. And again, the same with the TV in the evening, I would show those things and I would do the one with Laura cooking dinner and me being like, oh, it's going to kill me. Because it's the things that I put into the daily life on my stories. It's the same thing you're sharing, but you're coming at it from different, I'm coming at it from different angle. Come out from a different angle. Um, but that's, how, and you can do the same things. You have those same things on your daily life. You just don't know it yet. And you've got to then slowly get them in over time and develop on your stories to then be able to post that sort of reel where you'd have fun with it. And maybe that's the day in life thing we should do. Maybe we should do that one day we, um, we, ourselves. But, we should. you know, it's, 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 it's thinking outside the box with it. But when I say that to people, they think I mean it has to be a cinematic masterpiece. I'm like, no, when I say think outside the box, I mean, don't think it has to be that. Just post it raw. Just just post it. And you'll go, I didn't like that bit. I didn't like that bit. How can I make that funny? How can I do this? The amount of coaches that I know have good content ideas, but they don't do it because they're afraid that it's not good enough or that it's not quite as professional as it should be. And I'm like, oh, just fucking post it. Seriously, that, some of our best content has come about because just on the, off the cuff, we thought that'd be really funny. Let's just do it. I, um, I put up just on my stories yesterday that I was watching Power. I, I had 10 or 12 responses and I, had, um, I put a poll with it, seen it, yes or no. I don't think he had astronomical um, votes. I think it was about 50, 60 votes or something like that. But it's 50, 60 people I could have, if I wanted to, reach out to and yep. go to everybody that said yes, I could have said, it's fucking brilliant, isn't it? To everybody that said no, I could have said, get on it. It's great. Don't watch it, yeah. Right. But I, get, I got 10 or 12 but, DMs off the back of it. But also out of those 60 conversations, you might get 15 replies to start a conversation with. And coaches sit there and go, oh, just no one's reaching out. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah, they're not going to give them an opportunity to. So the last point uh, that I was going to make that I forgot about from earlier was we've just um, started to work with a coach ourselves who's like a property investment coach. So the point about being on your own journey and showing that you're walking the walk, I don't think we... <laughs> I say I think. We wouldn't have signed up with him if he wasn't a property investor. Like, it, it, it's crazy. Like, is that, and, is that mental to think about that we wouldn't do that? Yet coaches... Don't don't show what they're doing on on any journey. Not particularly training hard. Don't really stand for anything. They're yeah, yeah. expecting people to pick out of every online coach that's out there. Loads of them. They're expecting them to all go to to you. Give them a reason to go to you. The reason why we signed up with him is because he's done a similar thing to what we want to do eventually. He's got all of this social proof behind him. He still does it, and he's in the trench in the trenches in the trenches doing it himself now, whilst obviously helping other people do the same thing. That's what's drawn us to him. We like his personality. He comes across really well. He comes across trustworthy. It took us a I, year. Well, I followed him for two years. To, Dan's followed him for two years. I've only followed him for a year. Yeah. It took us that amount of time for us to reach out and go, yeah, this is the person that we trust to, to help us move on to this next stage. Yeah. That long. Coaches, take note of that. Understand yeah. like, this what is, that means. This is someone who's hugely successful. I think at any one point, I think one of his things is at any one point he's got 25 million 25 net worth million. Of, of property on his on his portfolio at any one time. Um, clearly someone you can trust. And it took us a year to reach out to him. So 
how long do you think it might take some of your audience to reach out to you if, no disrespect, you're not the equivalent of a £25 million net worth property investor. You are the equivalent of someone who's probably got their first house. Yeah. That's you're it. the equivalent of that. And like, okay, so if you're looking at those two examples, what's that person who's done the one house got as an advantage over the other person? Well, they know what it's like, the feelings to be to get your first house, the, the, the stress, the anxiety. Is it the right thing to do? Well, with all due respect, the property investor we work with, he, he won't post content like that because he doesn't work with those people because he's like, well, no, that's, that's lower level. He's got like a similar members group to us. That's, you go there for that. He doesn't post that much stuff around that. So just an example there of how you can use those two advantage, those two scenarios to your advantage. If you're that person, you are closer to that journey. You are closer to that person and what they're feeling, what they're going through. Use it to your advantage. And, and that's why enough coaches are not doing that. They're just not focused on those things. And they're not prepared to wait. Like I said, you know, he, you know this guy, by the way, didn't cold DM us. He never reached out to us. We've had a few back and forth because I replied to some of his stories before. It's nothing that we're not telling you to do that has happened with us and who we've reached out and paid quite a lot of money to takes time and, and people aren't prepared to to give it 2024 to go well this client might sign up at the end of 2024 they want them to sign up now that's half the problem yeah so this is what we would do in 2024 and probably every year because these are not trends that these are principles um show social proof be more yourself days in lives weeks in life personality get off the trend wagon take the principles of why a trend might work a good hook Keep it snappy, show personality, but don't go per, you know per se down the specifics of it needs to be five pounds of fat, it needs to be a wooden spoon. It doesn't. Principles, okay? If you like that video, then just fucking like it. Come on, just what are we doing here? Like it, and you if know, you need more help with on. what you're doing, um, we have a members group, which is only £99 a month, which is a ridiculous price point um, for what you get and all the resources in there. So if you need any help with... Um, yeah, understanding, I suppose, you know, more about content in 2024, how to then monetize those followers once you get them in through the door, how to coach them, how to onboard them, how to get amazing results, and do all the things we just mentioned. Join that group. Link's in the description. I'll say bye. It's not description. Come say hello.